Is there anything you want to add to that for yourself? Um, a fucking book! <laughs> <laughs> Well, I learned to work on cars actually a really roundabout kind of way. I learned, oh, I was a Lego kid, I played with bricks, I played with little tiny wheels and technical stuff as well. And then I actually did a degree in engineering product design. And I bought a Volkswagen Beetle early on and it failed its MOT almost immediately. And then I had to learn how cars worked and so then how I could fix them. Favourite tool, if it's going to be just confined to my toolbox, at least just on top, it would have to be the welding mask that's solar powered. So when you strike up an arc, it instantly goes black, just like those kind of scary goggles in uh, the Hitchhiker's Guide. And then that way you can actually weld safety without kind of burning your eyes out. But if it could go a bit bigger than that, maybe a vapor blaster. It's a really, really cool bit of kit. It kind of has steam with glass beads inside and actually clean off paint and rust and all kinds of stuff off your little metal parts. But then also it does a really lovely sort of surface on that metal to stop it corroding any more later. I currently own uh, a couple of Range Rovers, neither of which work very well at the moment. Um, I've got a 1916 Cadillac and a 1918 Cadillac, which are very, very cool, also don't work very well. I have a sofa car, which works fantastically, but not necessarily in all weathers, and loads of other weird stuff as well to go with that, but nothing normal. So get in trouble with this question, can I? Well, I obviously quite like working on Volkswagens that I come up by grew up with. I love the fact that they're very interchangeable. Cars I don't like, I suppose, Morris Miners, I didn't really ever see the point about it, especially the woody where you had kind of aluminium being held on with iron into kind of wood which is going to basically just hold water so it all rots and rusts away. Pointless idea. Out of all the cars I've worked on, I mean I think I've done 135 cars on the show over those last sort of 13 odd years. The Lamborghini Uraco was a fantastic car, the Amphi car was awesome. I guess I've ended up keeping the Cadillacs out of the show. The, the Direct, the 1903, we borrowed that, but I still like to have hung on to that whole thing as well. And then I guess maybe the beach buggy would have been nice. So just those ones. I can't, I don't think we've ever had a car on the show that ever fully defeated me. In fact, even slightly defeated me, actually. We obviously had lots of challenges and that's only really part of the fun. I love solving problems and it doesn't matter kind of how diverse or difficult those problems are. It's always nice to have a good sort of tackle, but I guess, I think on the show we've never had anything that got away. I mean, one car in my comfy banana world, we we're building all these weird vehicles, I never quite got around to doing was a, basically a driving glitter ball that would spin as you were driving and it have its own light source and, and sort of it would just sort of spray the light all over the place. It'd be wonderful. But the thing is, curved glass is really difficult to make when it comes to cars or making it sort of so you can see through it. If you look at the London Eye, some of those window panes, if you like, are a little bit distorty. So actually that's quite hard. So that's the one that's eluded me. Favorite t-shirt? I do have quite a few t-shirts and in fact the last series or so I started designing my own and I think one of my current favorites I'm not wearing today is a very very clever joke about binary and street culture which you'll just have to look up later. That's a really interesting question. I think well obviously we're going to be going towards electrified classics that's definitely a thing that's going to happen so when it comes to fiddling with your tools you're going to have to have insulated tools that's going to be key, otherwise you will die. Electrifying classic cars is absolutely the way to go. Not all of them, I have to say. Obviously, there are some cars where it's all about the engine, but there are so many other classics where it's all about the silhouette, how wonderful. A DS would be a classic example of that. It's a beautiful, beautiful car. You wouldn't buy it because of the engine, but if you put an electric one in, it'd be much more reliable and it'll be even smoother and even quieter. So it's absolutely the way forward. Well, there's a couple of projects. I mean, I, I, at one point, I had a list of projects to do with Comfy Banana, which were, there was so endless. In fact, I worked out that if I only spent six months on each project, I'd be dead way before I'd even got about a third of the way through. I'd love to do a desert island. I had this idea to doing, you drive a desert island with a beach hut sort of thing, and there'd be another island behind us, a sort of a trailer. That'd be quite fun. I think it'd be quite good to do also, I wanted to do the world's fastest tea party. So I actually bought a Rolls Royce. I actually snuck it away um, from, my, from my wife's notice until she did actually notice it because she found the keys in my pocket. Anyway, whatever, long story, but essentially got a Rolls Royce engine. It's going to be a table seating eight people. And the idea was to go as fast as we possibly could down the mile. It'd be amazing. It still might happen. The best first car is probably still one of the older ones. I think modern cars are quite difficult to play with and also to get that satisfaction. If you've got to plug a box in and just change units, it's not that interesting. But I think getting kind of down with the spanners is good. So I still think a Volkswagen of any kind would be quite groovy and even them sort of the water cool ones. But I think 
you know, the air cool stuff is actually much more usable, much more fiddleable, and maybe things like minis and stuff, maybe even a little escort. But I think you've got to go for something where there's an awful lot of support um, and obviously not too much specialism, otherwise it's going to be a nightmare. <laughs> now this question, so first of all, they're not rubber. I'm just going to try and rummage in my pocket because I do have, as always, a couple of nitrile gloves. The thing is latex is really, really bad for you. The nitrile ones are really, really good for you. And they're also impervious to all kinds of horrible automotive chemicals. So the reason I do that is because I don't want those chemicals going into me. Why would you? It's all about health and safety and looking very, very stylish. I'm currently going to get around to working on both of my Range Rovers to make them work properly. That's basically it at the moment. I might also redo the sofa. It's its 21st anniversary this year and I've been threatening to redo it forever and ever. I'd like to make it electric and then I'd like to drive across America and eventually go and get our speed record back. So I set the record at 87 miles an hour. I now need to do about 120 just to just stop everybody else even bothering ever again to attempt that record. Well, if I do get tired of cars, I've got a boat, so I just go out on that, and that's extremely relaxing, and then I normally have to come back and then carry on fiddling with the cars. <laughs> I'm too big to fit on most things. I don't, I've never really ridden a motorbike for that reason, because I just look stupid, frankly. I look like kind of a praying mantis on a moped, so that just doesn't make any sense at all. But I think, really, I mean, there were lots and lots of cars, but actually, I'm not really so much into the sports car thing, and of course, that's the most of the cars that I don't fit in, because I don't need a penis extension, frankly. I think working on cars can be extremely good for your mental health. It seems that me working on cars is very good for many people's sort of mental health around the world. But I think you can get frustrated, you need to find a way of getting past that, and I think tea is normally the best remedy for that. Okay, so if I was gonna pitch, or come up with the perfect pitch for a car show, which of course I have already got in my head, um, it would obviously involve me working on cars, explaining stuff, because that's what people really want to see. There'd be probably no buying, probably no selling, probably no dead weight and um, you know I guess there'd be no TV bullshit either but it'd be wonderful and amazing and you can commission it here anytime you like. No, no need. Much bigger and better things to do. Hmm, probably fuel injection. V8. V8. Definitely Lamborghini. Charger. Aston Martin. MX-5. Engine rebuild. Patina. Yes, buy my book immediately. It's fantastic. It's ready for pre-order as we speak, and it's got me on the cover, which is obviously a good thing. It's got my name, and it's got what I do. So it's all good. Buy it now, please. <laughs>